All right. If... Thanks for joining everyone. Let's give it a few more minutes. Uh, I'm not sure if some of the folks uh, from the, t the group are going to join today who were at a meetup uh, yesterday. There was a meetup at the Intuit. Meetup about what? Yeah. everyone. Hey, Josh. I'm sharing the meeting notes. Um, feel free to add yourself. As an attendee here. Guys are listing the value we could think. I suppose uh, we can get started. Um, uh, we did do some brief intros and we'll get going with the agenda items. Uh, uh, so I'll start, uh, um, Cardo Aravina. I'm a co-chair for TAG Runtime, also uh, lead for this uh, working group. Um, uh, so I've been involved in this working group since the beginning and also been involved in TAG Runtime from the beginning, but I'm excited to be here and um, you know, feel free to reach out if you have any anything, any questions or anything I can help with. Go with D. Deep. Yeah, hi, so I work for Cisco. And uh, I generally work uh, on the tax security side, but uh, I'm one of the participants uh, starting on the Cognitive AI security paper. So that's why I'm here. <laughs> awesome, good to have you. Uh, Claudia? Yes, um, I'm Claudia from IBM Research in New York. Um, I've been trying to attend as much as possible these meetings, and I've also helped out with the um, or the, the first cloud native uh, AI paper, white paper that uh, we wrote, and also the the scheduling one. Um, otherwise, in my daily life, I do um, observability mainly on OpenShift Kubernetes platforms. Uh, for um, training and inference jobs. Awesome, thank you. Uh, George, your Gallus. Good morning, I'm a um, systems engineer. I have about 20 years experience, mostly in um, HPC, scientific compute. Um, you know, my focus is also in security and uh, I'm uh, interested in AI. All right, welcome. Yeah, we have a lot of challenges with HPC, it's especially now with GPUs. <laughs> All right, uh, Raghu Shankar. Yeah, hey, thanks. Yeah, this is Raghu Shankar. I'm a first time 
to this uh, forum. And uh, I am an entrepreneur right now looking for new problems to go solve. And uh, I've been looking closely at uh, cloud native architectures for the last, I think, at least one or two years, maybe more. And uh, uh, till last year, I was uh, at uh, Dell Technologies. And in Dell Technologies, I was in a more of a product management role for multiple server generations. I also ramped up the AI side of it, participated in HPC side of it for like 17, 17 years. Before that, I was at Intel on a microprocessor, both the product management, product marketing, and architecture. So I'm very, uh, and I right now I'm setting up some uh, Kubernetes cluster with uh, some simple test cases. So I've just been hearing a lot, reading a lot about CNCF, reading a lot of research papers on the academia, some on the CNCF side. So I'm very eager to see what interesting uh, work happens here that I can hear, hear, listen, and also maybe contribute. Amazing. Yeah. So yeah, thanks for joining. Uh, welcome to participate. Um, and yeah, we could definitely use your experience. Thank you. Uh, Josh. So Josh Halley, I also work for Cisco. Um, part of the CTO office for the company at the moment, mainly focusing oh, on strategic awesome. initiatives. Um, yeah, worn many hats over the years. At the moment, key focus is around security and observability also. Great. Thanks. Adam? Yeah. Hey, everyone. Uh, I'm Adam Zaluk, and uh, I'm a product manager uh, working for Red Hat, but I'm also one of the co-leads of this AI working group, so looking forward to collaborating with you all. Thanks. Cameron? Hi everyone, I'm Cameron McDougall, and uh, right now I'm doing some research on uh, scaling Kubernetes based on GPU metrics. That's awesome, yeah. Maybe I should talk to you afterwards, we're having some challenges with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. All right, uh, Vijay uh, Rodriguez. Hey everyone, I'm, I'm Vijay. I, I'm, I work as, a, as an escalation engineer in Microsoft on um, as a Kubernetes service, so uh, doing this as a hobby. Awesome. Yeah, and then yeah, we'll hear your updates uh, today on the scheduling white paper. So, all right. So I think we can get started with the next agenda items. Um, oh, sorry. I, uh, this is Sunil. Just I'm sorry. In. I miss you. Yeah. I'm yeah. Sorry. To wrap up the introduction, so I'm Sunil Ravi Party, based in uh, Santa Clara. Uh, so I've been uh, uh, working in the industry for the last uh, 20 plus years, uh, led the cybersecurity at Oracle Cloud Security, and uh, most recently at Anthem, I was leading the digital cybersecurity zero trust. And we were one of the early uh, members and partners with Skytail, uh, launching Spiffy Spire, uh, zero trust, and uh, using Speaky Spire for secure connectivity between payer member and provider at Anthem. So I left Anthem, started uh, uh, Yota Secure, dealing with uh, vulnerabilities in HPC environments using AI. Uh, so I was glad to be part of the open source uh, Intuit event yesterday, and it was nice meeting Ricardo and other uh, distinguished speakers of CNCF. Uh, so great demos. Uh, by RJ and everybody. So thanks, Ricardo, for hosting uh, along with others there. Yeah. Uh, uh, Ron actually gave a demo on case GPT and and uh, Kiberno. So that was a, that was a great demo. But yeah, good to meet you last night. Uh, yeah, and you. welcome. Yeah, welcome here. And uh, Joel Roberts, we're doing intros. Uh, I just thought that you just joined. Oh, I guess he's connecting, audio connecting. Uh, yeah. um, maybe it's not working. All right, so I guess we can continue with the next items. Anybody else that I, that I missed or not? Okay. All right, so we go with, um, so we have like this, uh, 
white papers in progress. Uh, so we have the AI sustainability scheduling paper, security paper. Uh, so we'll go one by one. Uh, AI sustainability, do we have anybody on the call that can provide an update on that? Yes. Um... Yeah, so we've been we've been making progress to this paper. So yesterday we met and we kind of like refactored the paper a bit and cleaned up the introduction. Um, at the moment, um, we are getting to the real content. <laughs> so far, we've been uh, you know positioning the motivation, structuring the paper, but then we're getting really to the problem space and describing it. We have a format um, to do that. Um, and so we were going to follow this format to describe the problems and the solution space. Um, and that would be the core piece of the paper or the contribution, the main contribution of the paper. So this is about to start. Anybody has any questions about that or any, any comments or anybody who would like to participate or any, anything interesting about AI sustainability topics that may not be covered in the paper that they may want to see. Yeah, I would uh, suggest if not uh, included like uh, AI trust and safety. Oh, trust and safety. There, there is another effort um, in collaboration with the L Linux Foundation folks in the data and AI uh, work stream. And there is a paper about well, actually, there's multiple things ongoing. There is um, a responsive AI uh, paper currently highlighting the dimensions, looking into highlighting the problems and identifying the problem space. Um, so that is already like in, in the final stages. Uh, we're looking to pack it up and, and ship it. And then the other pieces upcoming uh, uh, are basically exploring a deep dive into each of the dimensions. So currently, we have nine dimensions of, of responsible AI including trust and safety and transparency and all of these things. Um, and then there are other aspects also that we're looking to to work on in that work stream, um, which is you know around bigger picture, uh, how does super intelligence impact our projects, uh, but also looking into uh, use cases and grounding um was 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 actual cases like how how to apply the responsible AI dimensions to the use cases and to the actual deployments in real life. Um, so yeah, to TLDR that that's a separate work stream. Uh, but maybe also related to what um, we're going to be doing was the security piece. I'll, I'll I, I will not steal a deep sunder here. And so maybe maybe deep can talk a bit about that later. But yeah, so we're this is this should be covered either in relation to that or to this. Thank you, Adam. You're welcome. Um, before we move on to the next one, any other comments on AI sustainable sustainability? Something uh, questions or something that uh, like to see. And and to be concrete, I know this can be confusing, but this is actually environmental sustainability. I know folks might be thinking about sustainability in general, but this is actually about environmental um, uh, sustainability. Yeah. So a focus of the paper will mostly be around environmental Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, yeah, the, um, the confusion sometimes is around like sustainability or open source projects or, or envir environmental sustainability, right? So it, I mean, yeah. that we're talking about carbon footprint, uh, you know, like uh, yeah, exactly. Efficient and that is in, 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 yeah, exactly. And that is in collab with in tag environment sustainability. So that, that should clear the doubt. Cool. More comments, questions. All right. So scheduling white paper. We maybe have Vijay. Vijay, you might be able to provide an update. I, I think Adol, you might be also aware of what's going on there too. I don't know if yeah. you have Vijay. Is it? Okay, go ahead. Vijay. Yeah, yeah. I think the current thinking is to keep it open for um for any additional comments. But uh, Adol, yeah, yeah. Feel free to go ahead. No, I, I had a 
again, I'm not, I skimmed because of lack of time, but I skimmed through it. I, I resolved some of the uh, comments, I think. So the paper went through different phases, right? Uh, brainstorming, dump, um, you know, iterating over the problem space. And I guess, and then we, we opened again the paper for feedback. So that round of feedback, I think, is is almost done. And we will probably need to go through and talk through the the, the feedback existing today. Um, and the paper will need work, still needs work to, to be restructured based on that new feedback. Um, and hopefully that will be like the start of the end um, and to take us to closure with that paper. Um, yeah, so the paper is now ready for another meeting between uh, folks and we, we need to have schedule that meeting. I think everyone is busy at the moment. Um, last week, or I guess like the last meeting, uh, there was a couple of folks who were interested to drive that given that none of us has have enough time, but uh, I guess uh, this is where we are. We, we need to meet and execute on restructuring the paper. So then, uh, do we do do we think that we might have it ready by KubeCon or or that, that maybe the goal like KubeCon driven development? <laughs> I honestly that this one, uh, so KubeCon is 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 November this next month. So I I mean we we meet every realistically. I think we need another couple months uh to to kind of close that down unless unless we really meet on a very fast cadence. Um, and do like rapid iterations, rapid fire, like we did with the um, the cloud native paper. Uh, only if we do that, I think we might have a chance. Uh, but then we have to to do it. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Deep, we have a hand yeah. raised. Yeah, yeah, I have a question. Yeah, yeah. I have a question. I um, mean, Adil. So for this scheduling paper. I mean, I'm. I just want to know a rough idea. How long did it take to reach to the stage where it is? To the what? To the where it is. I mean, how much time did it take? I mean, how long uh, you guys are working on this scheduling paper? Okay. Have some rough idea. To reach to where it is now, right? You're asking? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, honestly, like where it is now, it didn't take, well, Vijay started with like, hey, I want to write something about scheduling. He, 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 he put on a lot of good ideas and then we went through a round, I guess that, you know, that round lasted about two weeks uh, of restructuring. So Ron uh, actually took the content and tried to restructure. We had another couple brainstorming sessions. And since then it has been uh, frozen, but then we opened up, like the idea was to close and then finalize. Um, but then other works, other folks from the community wanted to contribute. It was very interesting uh, as a topic. And so we opened it up again and then we had a bunch of other feedback and we never activated. So iteration wise, if we're really committed, I don't think it should take more than two to three weeks stops. Uh, but realistically speaking, because uh, no one have like kind of like picked the flame yet to say, I'm going to drive that. Uh, uh, it's kind of floating around. And, and, and so uh, I add hopefully best effort. People will go into the paper and put some feedback. So to answer your original question, didn't take long to reach to the point. Uh, people had ideas, Jay had ideas. And, you know, all of us went in and put our ideas into the paper, uh, but you know, publishing needs takes more than that. It takes takes, uh, yeah, I mean, it needs to be focused. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's about community work. Sometimes um, you try to get as many ideas from community members as possible, but uh, sometimes that actually can can take a long time and you can go back and forth. So like Adel said, you need to be focused and then you actually need to set some sort of strict uh, deadline. And then, you know, leave the door open to additional work and additional items, but then, you know, uh, communicate in, in a way that that actually can be addressed at, at a later time. Yeah. Uh, so Someone has their hand up, Cameron. Yeah, Cameron. Yeah. Um, so is the paper closed right now for edits? Uh, I it, two weeks ago, right after our last meeting, I went through and added some thoughts, and I I put some notes in there for 
there were some things that uh, people had identified that needed to be added. And then I, I saw a few things that I wanted to add as well, uh, but I haven't had a chance to go back. So I, I, I would love to go back and do that. Awesome. Uh, please do it. <laughs> yeah. uh, so if you want, I think the paper now needs someone to drive it that has time to drive it. And so if, if that's something you can do, that would be amazing. And that will help us close gap of time way quicker um yeah let's see i could drive it probably in about a month's time um i yeah i've got a conference next week that i'm going to a conference the week after and then a conference two weeks after uh, i'm going to web summit and um and then tech crunch so I'll, I'll actually be in the bay area if anybody wants to meet up by the way but um yeah, I would say like between a month from now and, you know, if we're looking at two or three months time, I I could, I could potentially do that. Just not Thanksgiving week. I think best effort now would be like for everyone to like, at least to close the comments and so on. And then, and then, yeah, I think that absolutely. I, that's why, like, initially, uh, I didn't think uh, to, to your question uh, regarding, like, KubeCon might be in far-fetched, but uh, we have, we'll have a lo lot of other chances to present this um, work. Um, the space is also evolving fast, and I think the more we include in the paper, the more it will relate to what's happening in the community. Um, so that gives us also a chance to add new developments. We, we could also, uh, during KubeCon, instead of announcing it, we could say, hey, uh, help us. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. All right. Um, yeah. And, I mean, anybody wants to take over what driving this is also free to do it. Uh, we're happy to facilitate, help guide. Uh, Based on also an experience from the Cloud Native AI white paper that we published before KubeCon uh, this year, uh, so there are multiple initiatives. I, I think we we have like a lot of different initiatives, so it's been kind of challenging to focus on on all of them at the same time. But we we're, we're hoping like people in the community, you know, can step up and, and drive uh, these things. So I think. Uh, what it, what this entails it means setting up the meetings like the follow up meetings and and maybe on a weekly basis and get all, the group together who's interested in contributing and um and make sure that those ideas are are uh, written on the paper and and not, and some some target date right like some some sort of milestones right uh, to uh, you you make progress and and you get to the finish line Any, anybody else has any other comments? So we can move on to the next item, the security paper. And I, I yeah, and I think we have some people driving this paper already. <laughs> so I have a couple of update. So the first thing is that uh, we just, uh, uh, I mean, set up, I mean, we announced that we are going to meet bi-weekly the Friday in between this meeting, the same time. Um, and anyone who's interested here can go and actually also express the interest on the issue itself so that we know, or you can actually use the Slack channel. So basically we are going to meet bi-weekly in between this meeting. That would be first and third Friday, 8 a.m. PT. Um, so that is a good thing. We'll be meeting for our, the first one uh, will be on October 18th, 8 a.m. PT. I think you can translate your time. Um, I'm hoping Adele would be there in the first one. Would you be there, Adele? I I will, yes. I think if it's, it's I will try, yeah. It, so the Friday 8 a.m. is, so is this the same time like today? Yeah, exactly this time. Exactly okay. this time. Yeah, I think it, yeah, it's a good time for me. 
Yeah, October 18th, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and also it is the same, uh, basically, uh, Zoom link uh, we are going to use. So ex exactly like this meeting. Um, other than that, I did take this issue of coordination between uh, tag security and tag runtime basically on this one. So what I have been told is that there is no such formal thing needed eventually, but I have to be there, keep on talking about its progress so that uh, some of the folks over there, particularly leads, uh, can take a look. And actually they have a template before uh, they declare anything done by them. But the issue of template or what is to be covered, et cetera, would happen when we have the content and we rope them in to see and their feedback. So essentially taking a feedback from tech, secu tech, tech security and working on that. And so they just see that everything is fine and covered would just work. There is no formal thing needed that is confirmed by Marina Moore a chair, a tech security chair, basically. So that's fine. And now uh, I was actually busy uh, because we have a delivery, major software delivery uh, this Monday. So apparently I will have much more uh, bandwidth to work on it. And I'm hoping that on October 18th, our first one, we'll have something meaningful to discuss. So do attend uh, if you want to. So is that um, on our CNCF calendar as well, or is it a separate uh, 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 event? I think calendar as of now uh, shows there only second and fourth this meeting. It doesn't okay. have anything for security white paper. What I would like to do is that, uh, I mean, it can be inserted if you like, but I just want to be sure that there are a bunch of people over there. And also, uh, in my opinion, security white paper, I mean, uh, sh there should be certain number of uh, dedicated people who attend it and who take, I mean, uh, it would be quite different to this meeting, right? Because we'll be discussing technical stuff. And uh, uh, so I'm not sure. I mean, Ricardo, I think if you re really want to put in the calendar, that's fine, but we are using the same uh, same meeting, same time, interlaced between this meeting. What do you do? What do you do for the other uh, uh, paper, uh, Adele? Yeah, we we have we have something, but for the other paper, we have used the tech environment sustainability calendar to add a new meeting. Potentially, we could do the same with tech security or create our own um, uh, cadence in the calendar. So that would ha have to happen, Ricardo, through runtime. Uh, we would have to create a dedicated uh, meet. So potentially, you might need a service ticket for that. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, I mean, it's up to you. Uh, we... I mean, we should be doing, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, people should have easy access to attend it. That's for sure. Uh, what I was not sure is that how to make this confusion, uh, not, you know, people thinking that they are attending one meeting, but actually they're attending another one from that perspective. Oh, the yeah, I, I guess the title of the meeting should should be clear. Um, yeah, and I don't think that will be, uh, yeah, confusing. Can, yeah, I can follow up, um, afterwards and open a ticket with the CNCF and, uh, they'll add it to the calendar with a different title, basically. So the, I, I guess the title will be security AI white paper meeting, something like that. That's right. Yeah. That would be great. Yeah. Sounds good. Um, uh, what something that I wanted to share is also this. Um, the I'm not sure if you some of you have seen it, but the TOC actually uh, created this template for a white paper. So this it's probably going to be su super helpful for folks you know, starting the white paper, right? So, um, no, so I'll just paste it on the meeting notes. Somewhere here. Yeah. Cool. Oh, any other things about security white paper? Yeah, white paper. No, I would say that whoever is interested, please do attend the first one uh, coming Friday. 
Yeah, and, and I would just also advertise this on the tag run, tag run time or tag security channels, right? So all, all the different CNCF channels and any, I mean, even externally, if you have any other channels so that you get more, more folks joining in and yeah. Contributing. Right. So I think uh, this has already been to tech security quite a few times, I would say, but it can be done again. And uh, I also had posted this uh, on the OSSF site, AIML. They have the other group. And I mm -hmm. see that a couple of uh, actually uh, folks from there actually have joined. So yeah, so three places it been, but uh, it can be done to more places. I believe so. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks. All right, so let's move on to, okay, so we covered security, we covered scheduling. Okay, so next item on the agenda. Uh, so we have KubeCon, uh, AI at KubeCon, KubeCon happening next month. Uh, any, any, any talks that folks that are actually given on the call, anything that they want to talk about and do, or you want to informally meet? Uh, at the conference, we're gonna have a tag run time KubeCon booth, but um, also open to any other things or any other ideas. Well, any comments from anybody on the call? I won't make it to this KubeCon, unfortunately. <laughs> I'm gonna miss you. I'm just gonna be there two days. Uh, but other folks on the call are going to KubeCon. Uh, I wish, but I'm not. If if I had known, I I booked Web Summit in uh, Portugal before before I knew about KubeCon. I'll be um, there, KubeCon. Awesome, yeah. Andre, you're gonna make it to KubeCon? Yeah, I'm still working on this. Um, we yeah, will have a talk, but I don't know if yeah, I can manage to be there in person. Um, yeah, but some folks from Bachelor Room will be there. Yeah. I might make it, I just don't know if it happens, it's gonna be very last minute. I just want uh, to let everyone know that KubeCon also has a complimentary scholarship. Um, so uh, folks can apply for that and get free access if they get approved. Um, so if anyone is looking for um, complimentary scholarship uh, tickets, as well as uh, I believe there's a discount code which is going around. Um, so if you're on the CNCF Slack, probably uh, you can check the discount code. Uh, I, I believe it's 20% off or so. Uh, CSF Slack, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll pass that information to folks that are interested. So we can take a look. I think we will also just record uh, on the KubeCon. I think we're going to have a booth for anyone just interested on the KubeFlow side. I think some folks will be there to managing this thing um, with other projects. We, by the way, we need to stuff it. So if anyone interesting to speak about MLOps and Kubernetes and exciting about KubeFlow, let me know. I can contact you with our outreach team to get involved with some demos and presentations. Awesome. There is a, there is a this little, what we call a pre-conference uh, something about entire day cube uh, sorry Kubernetes and AI and there are some other AI sessions right a day before. Is there anybody attending that? Yeah, this uh, AI day right Kubernetes yeah. day zero event. I'm not attending, but I don't know if somebody else. 
this. Yeah, I just put the code in the Slack, uh, I mean, in the uh, chat here. I might attend just that day, might, <laughs> the AI day. If you're there, Deep, it'll be good to meet you. Definitely. Oh, you are on, you are there under this co-located, what the co-hosted or co-located event one day before, right? Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. I think I might attend that one. It's otherwise KubeCon is just too long. <laughs> I think I think yeah, also the KubeCon is is so if you're going for a specific talk, you do, yeah. but usually I, I go for I meet a lot of people. There will be no time for <laughs> for talks. Uh, that's the best part about KubeCon for me is talking to people. Yeah, because talks are going to be recorded anyways. Yes, yes, I think. Of, but, yeah, but if you include this, uh, what we call AI day and then uh, minimum three days KubeCon, it looks like entire week is gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If, if, if your company does not tell give you the week for free, <laughs> To go to the conference, nothing, nothing comes free, Adel. We work in the night, talking. Yeah. The <laughs> so yeah, this is the day zero. I'm sharing my screen here. This yeah, is day zero event. I guess there's um cloud native, cloud native AI. This one. Yeah, this is the one I was talking about. I think particularly my interest was this one because I do work on Kubernetes platform. But yeah, there are plenty of others. Yeah, there's some interesting things around LLMs, agents, um, GPUs. Yeah, so yeah, I mean, if you if you can attend, then then these are actually recorded, and so so any folk, anybody on the call can can actually watch them afterwards. Ricardo, we seen seeing many sessions this year in terms of observability and accountability, because I I, I don't know how it is in in the Americas, but in in Europe, we're seeing a whole lot of customers asking for traceability and, um, essentially an audit trail for execution of flows. For AI specifically, or for yes, for AI type type of loads. Um... Mainly yeah, they... because of the AI Act, the EU AI Act. There's for, for critical yeah. systems. They've got a whole bunch of requirements, and and it's kind of spooked a bunch of customers. Yeah, uh, I think there's two aspects of, of this. There's the um, tracing of the requests of the infrastructure, security aspects like encryption, um, and you know making sure that your systems are not necessarily hacked or something. But there's also the other aspect of the model outputs. Um, so there, so the Linux Foundation AI and data has some things going on in that area, you know, like um, like the responsible AI white paper, right? Um, in things related to like how you can guardrail the output of say your LLM, right? I I haven't seen lots of talks talks on that on uh, at KubeCon, uh, but there might be some mentions uh, briefly here and there. For example, there's like something here about LangChain, right? So LangChain can be tied together with some open source tools to to monitor the output of your LLMs like guardrails or or true lens. They also have like graph and up there, other, you know, there's the open source observability and it comes in accountability stack, traceability stack. So, uh, yeah, so people will, I don't think this talk specifically will talk about that, but, uh, the, I, I think your, your comment is to my experience is correct as well, Josh. Um, especially through the AI Act and so on, but generally speaking, people also look at accountability also from a cost standpoint, not just from regulations. Like people don't want to know how many calls an API, like you know, and especially with agents, how many calls, you know, how many LLMs and so on to, to track an application end to end. Uh, so there's interest in the space. 
not just from a regulation standpoint, but also from a costing billing standpoint. No, no, you're totally right. I think there's a FinOps perspective, which, which you know, is a general thing in any case in terms of workloads, but looking at LLMs, depending on what model you're using, it, yeah. you know, you can rank, rack up your costs pretty quickly. Especially um, with, with real, real-time real AIs now, like APIs now are crazy, like they're expensive. And so people are building applications for these things and it's like super expensive. Uh, but it, the good thing is it gets slower by time. Like So the, the funny thing is you, people are going to get things for cheap uh, in the future, but the, the same, they will use it more. And so it's kind of like Jeff, uh, Jeffrey's paradox. So, yeah. As, as the technology, if I may, as the technology evolves, I think the, the architecture is getting optimized and there's probably going to be some more changes before it settles out. But I, I totally agree. I think it's going to be cheaper, but uh, exactly how it's implemented and used, um, it's a little complicated. Um, Josh, if you could, uh, I wasn't really familiar with that AI Responsibility Act to European um if you have any interesting links to share in chat i'd be happy to see them i was actually replying to uh, adele's comments to my responsible ai and of course this meeting and one of the things that i didn't mention in my post yesterday was the business partners right i mean there's could be a conflict of interest if you're talking about technology and you're using ai uh in the context of this example um i opened a socket inspector and my Firefox about six months ago when I saw that my AI vendor had continuous sockets with all of the big identity tra trackers. I mean, I don't want to name specific companies, but um, you could basically say a dozen of, of them, including all the biggest ones, which was a shock to me because the only reason for a socket open in my prompt interface was to share my chat data, right? And uh, so I think that's a big deal, especially if you're uh, trying to, if you think you're, there's no advertising on my chat prompt interface. So how would I know that my potential competitors or so forth, uh, my details are being shared with them. And if they did uh, nefariously uh, use my data, uh, how would I know that I lost my IP? So I think these are important considerations as well. Yeah, but some of that content can be also on the security AI white paper, I believe. Yeah. I just wanted to throw it out there because as far as responsible AI and, and, and tracking, uh, it's easy. It, it's not been a popular topic. Uh, I don't think it's not as obvious as it should be. Thanks for the hey. A friend and I, uh, um, we talk about, you know, he posts on LinkedIn and stuff, and we, we've we had discussions about, like, how intellectual property, copyrighted stuff is going to be the hugest, like, it, it's going to turn into an enormous issue with AI, you know, with the models that are trained on stuff that they shouldn't have been without asking permission and all that. So it's, I think it is a, a hidden, very big topic in there. Oh, sure. My, my prior career was library research. And um, that basically stopped in the late 90s due to the advent of online uh, journals. And they basically said that my document delivery service was wholesaling um, their IP. And even though the University of California Regents said that I was able to use their libraries for um, as a commercial service to vendors, um, the notion that I was using, I was now delivering PDFs to, to my customers, um, basically cease and desist. You can't do that because our license for these expensive journals say that you're wholesaling their data. Uh, so I got into computers. Uh, but the, 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 the point is the whole notion of copyright and uh, provenance of information is something that's been neglected. I mean, PGP has been around for a long time, but people don't sign stuff when they're sharing it. There's no ring of trust as was initially conceived as being a panacea. Um, but now we really need it to, you know, to validate the credibility and the provenance of data and whether it's proprietary or not. And 
think that's a big education, educational avenue work effort required for uh, the training sets and the outputs and just describing ownership to information. Totally agree. Makes sense. That's uh, that's know. fascinating, George. That's that that's I could probably listen to a whole like uh, talk about that. Well, it's a, it's a conundrum, right? Because the copyright is is for progress of science and useful arts, right? That's why. That's so when you get a book and it says it was published by Oxford, you know because of the reputation of Oxford that it's a credible book. Um, but now we're using LLMs for credibility and the consensus of all the training data altogether um, as truth. And I, I think what's actually happening here is not that they're getting um, general intelligence, but what our notion of intelligence is, is changing, right? It has to be something that satisfies good for 95% of the people 95% of the time, not simply, uh, you know, and what that is is changing. It's, it's, you know, last year it might have been okay to be. Uh, um, I'm going to try to say it's hard to do research with Google, right? Because you get you get a lot of answers that serve most people, but you don't get the best, very best answers, kind of buried in all the um, search engine optimization data that's out there. Um, so yeah, it's a conundrum figuring out how to ascribe ownership to intelligence and, and building that tree because it's not the way we normally communicate, especially online. Right. Uh, anything else from KubeCon? All right, so the last thing we have in our, nobody else has anything that, that we already talked about. The last thing that we have is the issues in the repo. Uh, so we have a long backlog of things. Uh, and obviously we don't have enough folks to drive them. But if you are interested in any of these things, uh, feel free to jump in and yeah, take ownership or and 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 drive these. And, and, and some of those things are of your interest. If there are other things that are not here that are part of your interest, also feel free to create a ticket or issue and make that a, a, a an initiative. Um, so we the community is fully supportive of all these different things, but I know. Everyone is short on time, uh, and if it's something that you're really interested, um, uh, the specific person can drive the issue or whatever initiative to completion. Just and 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 we're happy to facil facilitate, like Ado, myself, uh, and Ron, and anybody, and uh, also working with the CNCF groups. Can you add that link uh, on your on that notes? I'll just click and see. Yeah. Thanks. So speaking of that, we also recently updated the charter uh, document, which also should have uh, links to uh, the tracking dashboard. And there's also an onboarding section. Uh, and also, in case you didn't know, and for new joiners, this is where we, uh, so this tag runtime working group, uh, CI, AI working group is, is I've sent a link, uh, if, if you're looking for a shortcut, yeah. Um, so this is, this is where most of the uh, information resides um, for what we do as well, and where you can get to also the product dashboard um, as well. Yeah, so just an FYI for folks. Thanks, I'll, I'll, I'll start reading more and more now. At least I will do that, thanks.
Yep. Okay. So yeah, this, and, uh, let me share this link here. So that's all we have for today. In the last minute, minute items, anything that uh, you'd like to talk about, or maybe uh, we can address in the next meeting, or we can talk in more detail in the next meeting. Nothing for me. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, everyone. Have a great day, and and we'll see you next time. And and any any follow ups, uh, you know, you can just use the working group Slack channel, um, and also the tag run time channel. So if you have anything, just 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 bring it up, and and I'm sure like folks will. We'll follow up. Okay. Bye. Thanks for coming. Thanks, everyone. Thank you all. Bye. Bye. Bye.